The other day we did the best DLC weapons in COD history, and you can't do the best if you don't know the worst. DLC weapons were introduced to COD back in Black Ops 2, which do you guys do you guys remember the first DLC weapon? Do you remember what it was? Let me know in the comment section. And they started simple. I mean, uh, you just had simple guns. They didn't have anything special about them, but they eventually turned into a giant part of the game with an addition of supply drops and battle passes. Now, DLC weapons have a tad bit of a bad rep with the COD community due to them often being overpowered, but what about when the opposite happens? What about the DLC weapons that weren't worth anything? Welcome to the page, everybody. Chaos here. Today, we're going to be looking at the 10 definitive uh, worst DLC weapons in COD history. Some of them have been buffed since being added to the mix, but some others, they're just as bad as ever. So you drop a like, let me know what you thought was the worst. And at number 10, the GPMG, what a name in COD World War II. An LMG, also known as the, the Breda M1930, and it showed up in a couple classic COD games. Big Red 1 is one of those. But when it was added to COD World War II as DLC, it was hated by most of the community because of how bad it was. Despite being an LMG, the GPMG only had a 30 round mag, which is laughable, and it had a painfully long reload animation to boot. It was a consistent four shot kill, but I mean, it only fired at 722 rounds per minute, and it kicked a lot. So let's review the facts. 30 round mag, moderate time to kill, horrendously long reload animation, and the slow handling speeds of a bulky LMG. Why would you use it? You wouldn't, right? This was one of the first DLC weapons added to COD World War II, and after that, the game, I mean, it got better. It had a painful launch, but it got better. The community wasn't happy here, though. Eventually, Sledge buffed it and made it slightly better than the original version, but it was still kind of borderline useless. Way too slow to ever use practically, and I think it's a good way to kick off today's list. Before we move on, guys, check out the new Chaos Call of Duty channel link at the top of the description. Daily COD content, you've been asking for it for years. Leaks, rumors, news, updates, patch notes, drama, whatever it may be, we've got it covered over there on the daily. I'll see you guys over there. At number nine, the AK-74U in Black Ops 3. I said too long ago that this was the worst AK-74U in COD history, and I, I reaffirm that. Classic SMG added to Black Ops 3. We were all excited. I was excited. It was added to the supply drop system, though, late in the game's life cycle. But unlike other versions of the 74U, this one was trash. Fired at 652 rounds per minute, it could take up to six shots to kill, which is just plain embarrassing for an AK-74U. The reload animation was long, would constantly get you in trouble in between fights. Most of the time, you were killing in four to five shots, and for an AK-type weapon, it's not good enough. The recoil was high, the range was bad, the reload animation was slow, and the firing sound, well, it was, it was just weak. It was weak and lame. And then you had to pull it from a supply drop. <laughs> No. At number eight, the RSA interdiction in Black Ops 3. We're just picking on Black Ops 3 here. I mean, this one should have been awesome. It should have. Bolt Action Sniper, it generated a ton of buzz leading up to its release, but ultimately it didn't make a splash. Bolt Action Sniper was the only, it was the only one in the game. I mean, it was the only one in the game to have aim assist, that is, which made a lot of people think it would be incredible for quick scoping and incredible for aggressive play styles. But the handling speeds were very slow and clunky, and the one-shot kill range was extremely small compared to other bolt-action snipers. Now, weapons like the Locust may have been harder to use consistently due to the lack of aim assist, but the handling speeds, they were way quicker. And the one-shot kill range was much more forgiving. The RSA had some co cool traits to it, but it wasn't worth using when you compared it to the other snipers in the game and the fact that, yes, it was locked behind supply drops. It just made it sting. It wasn't completely awful but it was certainly a lower tier sniper, and I would say it was one of the worst DLC weapons in COD history. At number seven, the Striker 45 in Modern Warfare 2019. If you've been watching this channel at all, you probably, you probably know how much I love the UMP 45. It's one of my favorite weapons in the classic Modern Warfare 2 era, and when this one was announced, I was excited. Unfortunately, the Striker is not the UMP. It did not do it justice. Yes, it looks like the UMP 45, but aside from only having a 25 round mag, it also had a very low rate of fire, 605 rounds per minute, and the damage, it just wasn't there. For a gun with such a tiny mag and a slow rate of fire, you needed it to hit harder than that, but it didn't. It maxed out at 30 base damage, making it a four-shot kill at just 605 rounds per minute with only 25 rounds in the mag. You do the math. Not very good. The range drop-off was also pretty brutal on it. It dropped all the way down to five to six shock <laughs> shots to kill when you were firing this thing slowly. It wasn't worth it. I mean, I don't know why Infinity War decided to nerf the UMP so hard in this game, but they did, and here it is. At number six, the MAC-10 in Modern Warfare Remastered. 
It's actually supposed to appear in the original COD Forge, you know that, but it was cut during development. When it came time to add DLC weapons to the remaster, Raven decided to finish Infinity Ward's work. They brought the Mac 10 into the mix. It was a cool idea to revive unfinished weapons like this, but the Mac, it just, it couldn't hang. It was added to the game in March of 2017. It was virtually identical to the Mini Uzi, but it had a few changes, mainly in the recoil and the iron sights. The Mac fired at 937 rounds per minute. That's nice. Hit for between 20 and 33 damage without stopping power. That's not bad, making it a four to five shot kill without headshots. If you threw on stopping power, three to four shots. Yeah, I mean, but it would kick really hard and it was only good at close range. If you spend any time playing COD 4 or MWR, you probably know that these stats aren't going to do it for a close quarters guns. Guns like the MP5 and the AK-74U, they could kill in two bullets from a much longer distance than the Mac had. And the Mac had to stay on target while it kicked like a mule. It wasn't awful, but it wasn't very good either. And for a DLC weapon, it didn't make a big impression. Again, I like the idea of finishing the weapons off that the original game cut, but the Mac 10 in Modern Warfare Remastered, it just wasn't very good. Now we arrive at the top five worst DLC weapons of all time. The AN-94 in Black Ops 2. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The AN-94 in Modern Warfare 2019. <laughs> the AN-94 is one of the most iconic ARs in COD history. Black Ops 2, you know the story. But when it returned in the MW reboot, a lot of the community were taken aback at just how hard it had been nerfed. As you probably know, the AN's an assault rifle that fires a couple rounds very fast at first before firing the rest at a relatively moderate rate. The damage per shot was actually pretty low, and the whole appeal is how great the DPS could be if you could hit those first few initial or bursts, that, those shots. So why is it here? Well, if you didn't hit the first few shots of your burst, the A94's time to kill was really bad, and even if you did hit your burst, there was a chance you were still going to get outgunned by your target. The Modern Warfare AN, it could hit for as little as 18 damage per shot. So even if you hit that initial burst, you were still going to have to stay on target for a decent amount of time, and since Modern Warfare had such a fast time to kill... You can probably see why the gun made the list. The Black Ops version, solid. Modern Warfare's version, let's be real, hot garbage. At number four, the KVK-99M in Black Ops 3. Everybody likes the AN-94, unless you're using the Black Ops 3 version. The iconic assault rifle returned in BO3, and it behaved pretty similarly to its Black Ops 2 counterpart, but the damage and the fire rate, for some reason, were drastically reduced, and we don't know why. For reference, the Black Ops 2 version fired at 625 rounds per minute overall, but the Black Ops 3 version was brought down to 555. 555. The BO2 version hit for up to 40 damage a pop. Black Ops 3, 35. If you didn't hit your initial burst with the BO3 A and 94, you were going to get hosed down before anything else happened. You were. And guess what? Yes, it was locked behind supply drops. There wasn't much reason to ever use it. I mean, it gave the A and 94 a bad name. Certainly one of the worst assault rifles in that game. At number three, Man, Black Ops 3, <laughs> you tried, didn't you? The HD40 and BO3. I've done a lot of complaining about this gun throughout the years, and while it was eventually buffed, it was absolutely awful when it first came out. Futuristic version of the iconic MP40, and we expected it to be amazing. Hype was through the roof. I pulled it. I pulled it out of a supply drop. I believe it was the first DLC SMG added to the game, and since it was such an iconic weapon, the community was expecting awesomeness. But what we got was a very, very slow, clunky, bouncy, ineffective pea shooter that was locked behind a 0.8% drop chance for some reason in supply drops. The whole appeal of the MP40 in World at War was the fact it could kill in two bullets. But the Black Ops 3 version rarely takes less than four, and since it was firing at 517 rounds per minute, that felt like an eternity. Treyarch eventually buffed the HD40 to kill a little quicker, and it's probably a mid-tier weapon today, but back when it was added, the entire community was in agreement. It sucked. It's pretty rare the whole community gets behind an agreement on something, but they did. At number two, the M16 in Advanced Warfare. You take one of the most iconic weapons in COD history, and then you shame it in this game. Added to the game in September of 2015, it made waves in the COD community for being completely trash i'm amazed sledgehammer let it come out the door three round bursts featured incredibly obstructive iron sights horrendous damage a painfully slow fire rate for reference the cod 4 m16 fired at 937 rounds per minute but the advanced warfares 789 on top of that it would often need four to five shots to kill because one burst kills were so rare and did i mention how bad the iron sights were i did but let me do it again if you were using an optic on it it was virtually impossible to aim especially with how often people were bouncing around and bunny hopping in the game it was bad, and while Sledgehammer did buff it eventually, it was too late. It was too little too late because hardly anybody noticed it, and they didn't use it. But there's one DLC weapon that I think was even worse than the Advanced Warfare M16. Are you ready? Hot take. Out of left field, the Dragoon in Black Ops 3. 
often called the single worst sniper in COD history. And that's saying something. If you go up against the Dragonoffs and the Wawa and all those, it was added to Black Ops 3 in June of 2018, two and a half years after the game came out. Yes, that's pretty cool, but since the gun was so bad, you have to wonder why Treyarch added it. Bolt action sniper, incredibly slow fire rate, some very slow handling speeds, and it wasn't a guaranteed one-shot kill. Plus, it was the only sniper in the game that had to reload every bullet individually, which was a weird design choice. Treyarch said they wanted the Dragoon to resemble old-school snipers from games like COD 4 and Black Ops 1, and while they did do that, a weapon like that doesn't work in Black Ops 3. Advanced movement, crazy abilities, couldn't keep up, couldn't hang. I mean, a weapon like this, it just, it would fit fine in a game like COD 4, but in BO3, it was bad. If you ask me, it's the single worst DLC weapon in COD history. Let me know where you guys agree. Let me know where you disagree. Check out the new Chaos Call of Duty channel, and I'll see you soon.